Hey everybody, welcome back to the Space News Pod. This is a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. And I'm your host, Will Walden. Now, don't mind this stuff behind me. Uh, we're moving houses, so there's a bunch of stuff that's being moved. There's boxes over here, and there's like blankets and stuff. So don't mind that. But what we really need to talk about is the progress of Starship. And it's really been heating up as SpaceX's Starbase. And the past week alone saw the unveiling and initial testing of the Raptor 3 engine. There's some spin prime testing for Ship 30 and continued construction on orbital launch mount. Now, simultaneously, SpaceX is preparing for its fifth orbital test flight while awaiting regulatory approval from the FAA. And that's with the possibility of attempting to catch the booster using the Mechazilla chopsticks on the tower down at Starbase in Texas. Now, Ship 33, which is part of SpaceX's uh, next flight uh, crew, is nearing full assembly. It'll be the first Block 2 ship having 21 rings instead of 20 found on Block 1 ships. And the additional ring allows for approximately um, 300 extra tons of propellant, which could significantly enhance the ship's capabilities and the performance. Now, two remaining sections include the bottom liquid oxygen tank section and the aft engine section, which are each composed of four rings. Now, the recent debut of the Raptor 3 engine was a surprise to most Starship enthusiasts like myself. I was like, where did this thing come from? The engine's set to replace the existing Raptor 2 on future Starship flights, and Raptor 3 is a refined iteration with much of the external plumbing either internalized and hidden or completely eliminated, including regenerative cooling channels that are now integrated into the engine casing itself. You can't even see this stuff. Now, this allows the engine to operate at higher pressures, leading to improved performance while reducing the uh, weight also and uh, the need for support of the outside plumbing. Now, Raptor 1, which was used in early suborbital test flights and on vehicles up to Booster 4 and Ship 20, generated 185 metric tons of thrust and weighed approximately uh, 2,080 kilograms or 3,630 kilograms uh, with vehicle side commodities. Raptor 2, which replaced it, started from Booster 7, Ship 24, delivered 230 metric tons of thrust while reducing the engine's weight to 1630 kilograms or 2875 kilograms with additional hardware. Now, Raptor 3, which is currently undergoing testing at McGregor, well, this engine is incredible. It promises 280 metric tons of thrust with a further reduction in weight to 1525 kilograms or 1720 kilograms when accounting for vehicle side components. Now, the engine's design improvements, such as the removal of flanges and seals on the high pressure side, enable it to operate at even higher pressures, enhancing its thrust capabilities. It remains uncertain when Raptor 3 will be integrated into any vehicle. More testing is likely to occur over the next month, which will require to validate the finalized design and the final product of this uh, ship. And on the operational front, Ship 30 underwent further engine testing last week, specifically a spin prime test. The test was necessitated by the swap of a Raptor vacuum engine, with R398 being replaced by R384. Whoa, just hit that. Although the exact reason for this engine swap remains unclear, it's not uncommon for SpaceX to replace engines before a new test. Now, following the spin prime test, Ship 30 returned to the production site for final preparations, which include completing the heat shield and other last minute tasks. Now, these steps are being taken in anticipation of orbital launch pad A becoming available. And once there, both Ship 30 and Booster 12 will likely undergo a wet dress rehearsal, although the timing and the likelihood of this happening in the next week or so remain uncertain. We don't know exactly when they're going to be doing this. And regarding the fifth orbital test flight, SpaceX has indicated via X that both the Flight 5 vehicles, Ship 30 and Booster 12, are ready to go. And that is pending FAA flight approval. Now, however, past experience suggests that such statements, um, they may be optimistic, 
as there have been instances where the vehicles were not fully flight ready despite similar claims. It may take them a little while to get this ready. And while awaiting regulatory approval for Flight 5, SpaceX has already commenced catch testing for the upcoming Flight possibly 5 or 6. Now, B-14.1, which is a booster uh, used for these tests, has returned to the orbital launch mount for further evaluations. Meanwhile, Ship 31 is currently undergoing a heat shield overhaul, similar to the work done on Ship 30, which is expected to occupy the high bay tiling station for some time now. Now, Booster 13, paired with Ship 31, has been stationed at Mega Bay 1 since completing cryogenic proof testing in April. Currently, a tent is erected over the forward dome, indicating that significant work is likely underway. Notably, Booster 13 still lacks its grid fins, which is a huge component for controlling descent during landing. They need these things. And as for orbital launch pad B, construction continues to progress. Now, the tower now has six standing modules, and the next three modules are being prepared for installation once the crane, which is undergoing reconfiguration, is operational once again. Now, crews are also reinforcing the tower by filling its hollow walls with concrete, which will increase the structure's strength. Now, going forward, work on the suspected flame trench continues. The flame trench. Didn't know there was going to have one as the teams drive sheet piles into the ground, which is expected to take several more months to complete. They're not going to be flying off this thing anytime soon. Additionally, the environmental assessment proposed uh, released recently provides further insight into the structure's development, uh, though its final shape remains to be seen. We kind of get an idea what it's going to be like but not 100%. SpaceX has also been refining the landing rail system on the Mechazilla arms, replacing many of the linkages and upgrading the actuators to handle immense forces involved during a catch attempt of the booster. Now, uh, these attachments and enhancements are crucial to SpaceX moves closer to catching the super heavy booster. This thing's 250 feet tall. And once it separates from the ship, it'll fly back to Starbase and then be caught by the arms. Now, uh, for this attempt, SpaceX may conduct, conduct more tests that we haven't seen much of, where both uh, arms of Mechazilla move in for a simultaneous closure, mimicking the forces of an actual booster catch. Now, moving in like this, the test could be pivotal in ensuring the system's reliability during the next flight, possibly flight five or five, uh, flight six. Now, they issued a public advisory too for flight five, for possible sonic booms during the upcoming Flight 5 test, as it will be the first attempt catch of the Super Heavy Booster, possibly post-launch. Possibly. I'm saying this possibly. Um, it's going to be seven to nine minutes after the launch, and it'll be caused by the booster decelerating from supersonic speeds, and it will create sort of like a thunder sound. If you've never heard it or felt it, that's pretty cool. Um, when a Falcon lands, it does a sonic boom, rumbles you it's pretty cool now their experience with 330 falcon rocket landing so far so they know all about the sonic booms and they're just warning people in the nearby area um it, it's a cool thing to happen and it goes pop pop you know when they when they when they do a sonic boom it's like a big pop but if there's two for a, a super heavy uh not super heavy but a falcon heavy pop pop two sonic booms very cool when this giant booster comes back this is going to be like Boom, it's going to be a big one, but they're still waiting approval from the FAA for this. And this is despite the existing license that's issued in June before the fourth flight. SpaceX must seek a modification to allow the booster to land a Starbase. They can't do this quite yet. Uh, there's new regulatory clearances that need to be done through the FAA. And the FAA also acknowledged that it is evaluating SpaceX's proposed license to land back at Starbase um, for this fifth mission. And if they don't approve it, that's okay. SpaceX can do another soft water landing in the Gulf of Mexico, and then possibly for Flight Six, they can come back to uh, come back to the pad. Now, safety is the primary concern, of course, for the FAA during uh, this whole process. And if everything looks safe, there should be no 
issue with this at all. So please leave a comment down below when you think Flight 5 will happen. And also, will they catch Flight 5 booster at Starbase? Make sure to hit the subscribe and like button with maximum dynamic pressure. Dynamic pressure. What was that all about? Uh, so you can get all the new Starship updates. And please um, hit the, uh, you know, while you hit the like button and the subscribe button, leave a comment. And if you don't have anything quite about Starship to say, just leave a rocket emoji. I really do appreciate that. It helps out the algorithm a little bit. And also, you know, it helps out the channel a lot. So it helps me. It helps you because when you do that, uh, I was going to say SpaceX, but YouTube sees that you're interested in space flight and they'll continue to send you more space flight content in your feed um, on a daily basis, not just from me, but from like other creators out there that are doing space flight stuff like SpaceX, NASA, other space flight creators. I've found so many space flight creators because I've done that. I've just saw someone out like, Hey, that was a cool video. I'm just going to give it a like next thing you know, they're in my feed again, but also I get some rando that has really great content in my feed. And I was like, how did that happen? That's why, because YouTube uses the algorithm to give you the things that you actually want to listen to and watch on YouTube. Imagine that that's <laughs> right. So let me know down in the comments. Uh, what do you think? Flight five or flight six? I don't know. Again, we're moving. So all this stuff in the background, it's going to change in the next, I don't know, uh, 20 days, 25 days or so. You'll see a whole new set, whole new everything behind me. Everything's changing, upgrading everything. So uh, I want to say thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel, especially members of the channel. Without you, I couldn't have done this. So thank you for that. We're almost at 100,000. So if anything, hit the subscribe button to help us out to get to 100,000. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate your time. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you in the next one.